Officially live with our very first Tokunet, Shukan Tokunet live. Welcome everybody. My name Ooh. is Squall Charlson. I am your host for this week of Shukan Tokunet. I'm joined by the lovely Nicole Amber here. I think everybody hey. can. Yeah. Hopefully everyone can hear you. I'll turn you up a little bit here too. There we go. <laughs> cool. So. What is Shukan Tokunet? Well, if you guys remember the weekly news roundups that we used to put out every week, we uh, we are changing that up a little bit. We are doing um, a live show. We wanted to kind of grow a community where we see a lot of people come on the site. We see a lot of people interact on our posts, and we thought what would be a good idea to bring everybody together. And uh, this is kind of this is kind of it. So uh, yeah. What do, you, what do you think, Nicole? Like, what do you... I am super excited because this is a cool way of us all talking about like the Toku news and all the fun things happening in our industry. So yeah, I can't wait to chat with everybody. Yeah, I, I think it'll be fun because every week we'll have new guests. We'll have some other special surprises. Um, like even today, I started thinking of other different things we can integrate into this. But anyway... Let's kick it off. Let's go over some of the biggest news pieces to drop this week. Uh, the first one, if you guys have been watching Lupin vs. Pot, this is going to be pretty exciting. So we have Jinji Edi, known for portraying Judo in the Kikaider reboot, will soon be a regular in the show. Um, if you guys look, you can kind of tell who he might be playing, uh, but revealed via the show's official Twitter, he will be playing the role of Zamigo Delma. Did I say that right? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Zamigo Delma, the mysterious man who froze and stole away the Lupin Ranger's loved ones. Ooh, so he's that one guy in the intro. You know what I'm talking about. With, uh... Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? walk. <laughs> yeah, he's got, like... Yes, yes. Like, the super cool, like, top third walk thing going on. Oh, man. <laughs> I love his hair. Like, we're, we're totally in this, like, Blackjack theme when it comes to Kamen Rider and now Sentai. Yeah. So I'm just like, ooh, let's let's see how far we can take it now. Well, it's funny, because, like, um, I've been really kind of looking at Sentai stealing a lot of stuff from Kamen Rider, because Kamen Rider has obviously, you know, kind of gotten a little bit away in terms of success, you know, recently. Um, and this is just kind of another thing that I feel like they've transpotted from Kamen Rider to Sentai's. Let's have a character with this hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> they stole from Taiga. There yeah, you go. <laughs> definitely. I, I actually, like, when we were posting about it and, like, putting images up and I saw it on Twitter, I thought it was Taiga for all I knew. I was like, oh, okay, cool. x aids getting another ending movie. Ooh, funny. Oh my god, another ending movie? Yeah. Wait, there's already, like, three. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 know I, I get a lot of Black for this, but I still have not finished X Aid. <laughs> oh, uh, I know. Oh no, you gotta. <laughs> I, I know. I've I'm really busy, and now I'm doing like a weekly video thing. It's it's hard, but uh, hey, everybody in chat, we uh, will uh, we have this thing going on that I'd like to introduce to everybody. It is called the Q and A mode. So check this out. I'm gonna click this button here. And there's now a link up at the top. If you go to that link, gigu.gol uh, slash slides slash j54nnd, you'll be able to basically put in questions or comments, um, and I can integrate that into the show. So if you guys have a good question that you want to ask either myself or Nicole or Tokunet in general, um, drop us a link there. People can upvote and downvote. And uh, yeah, it'll be cool. All right. On to the next one? Yeah. All right. So in terms of new faces that are going to be gracing our weekly toku, let's see. We got voice actress Sora Ami Mia. Again, did I say that right? Ame, Ama Mia. Ama Mia. Here I go you, again. You, you're thinking... <laughs> 
<laughs> that is pretty funny. You're thinking of the the Garo creator, Keita oh, Amaimiya. Yes, <laughs> Close. exactly. Um, well, anyway, she's she's joining Common Rider Build. So, um, I think it was on the 24th is when this came out on the official Twitter account. They announced that she would be joining the cast of Common Rider Build. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Sora, she is affiliated with music label Music Rayin and has lent her voice to such roles as Aqua from Kona Suba, um, God's Blessing of This Wonderful World, Elizabeth, I don't know if I'm saying this one right either, Elizabeth Leonis from The Seven Deadly Sins, and Toka Kirishima yeah. from Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, to kind of put that I, on she's there. a pretty prolific voice actor right now in Japan, especially for her role as Aqua uh, in the, and also uh, Toka. Yeah, definitely. They're like, very, very popular characters. I saw the name in it. I, like, I knew I had seen and heard that name somewhere before. And so seeing that, I was like, huh, that's kind of cool. I like how a lot of people, especially in Japan, can kind of go from one side to the other pretty easily. Whereas here, I think like the only person that really does it is like... Hank Azaria or Tom Kenny. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, the tweet basically said that Sora will be voicing, quote, mysterious voice possessing Mizora uh, Izuguri, Izu, Izurugi. Izurugi. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, everybody. We're, we'll get through this. Um, who was betrayed by... Who was betrayed by Kaho Takada in the upcoming 25th episode of Kamen Rider Build, Idol Awakening. So I'm wondering if this is going to be just like a one or two episode thing or if she's going to permanently, you know, kind of keep coming back and being a main character, which would be really cool to see. Yeah, I'd really like that because I think Misora is finally getting some really good character development in mm -hmm. this last few episodes in particular. And the more things that we see happen to her, the more and more I'm really interested in how she's going to end up by the end of this series definitely yeah i've um i've been catching up with build so i don't know i'm I'm just always excited to see new characters whether it be in common rider or sentai just because it just changes everybody else's dynamic so i'm i'm excited for this when does when does this episode come out the 25th is that the next episode yeah okay is that one coming out today then or next week's. So I think it's this coming up. Here, I'm trying to look. I have here. to double check. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure it's it's today's new episode. And that's one of the main reasons why we uh we also decided to set this time on Saturdays is to have it before superhero time, so that somebody can't just kind of come running in and uh, spoiling the new episode for everybody. So. That international clock bookmark, yeah. <laughs> I gotta do that too. All right. Well, while we're looking that up, did you did you happen to figure out if that was today? It looks like um, this week is twenty seven. I think. Yeah. No, this week's twenty five. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, we have someone sent in a question. Uh, Julian here asks, which common writer season would you recommend for a starter? Do you have any good ideas for him? Ooh, I would say Common Rider Double. Then again, I have a huge bias because I love that season. Yeah. Um, definitely a great season where it has a mix of serious but silly tones. It has great characters. Of course, the the henshins are cool and all the different forms that Double gets to have are pretty cool. So it kind of gives you an idea of what to look forward to in other common writers, at least of the Heisei Part 2 generation. But could you also be setting them up for failure of one of the best seasons and then nothing else kind of living up to that? that that's definitely like a disclaimer, is that <laughs> there's not really... Double has definitely been known as the best out of Heisei Part 2, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's still other strong contenders, even if they're not as good. Like, O's was very good, Following Double, Forze was very good, Gaim was very good, so I, I mm -hmm. think it's kind of, you know, it's a good progression into what Heisei Part 2 really is about. So in a way, it could kind of pad if something else doesn't quite live up to them. They know how good 
common rider could be because of double if they're going through o's and they're just like man nothing is happening you know for these last 10 episodes they fought a panda and that's all i can yes. remember um <laughs> if i had to put one down i would say my very first rider that i saw was decade i caught decade when it was like 10 episodes in um i don't know like it was nice because every other episode it was always a two episode arc they visited a previous writer's um, universe. And I didn't know watching at the time that all those universes that they, they meet and they visit are parallel universes. So I remember watching the Kiva one and in Kiva decade version, uh, Wataru is a young boy. And I was like, oh, cool. I want to watch this kid, you know, kick some ass. And like, let's see where this goes. <laughs> and um, I watched Kiva and I was like, wait a minute. It's that other guy. Wait, I was so confused. But um. I don't know, it kind of really helped set the tone of which one I should watch next. And then I watched Kiva, and I was I was okay with that. But then Den-O is like, I think without Den-O, I probably wouldn't have watched Kamen Rider um, double. Because Decade was kind of like, eh, okay, cool, whatever. And then, you know, and this is like when I had a bunch of free time, because I was in high school, and I could just sit there and watch an entire series over the weekend. Um but yeah, definitely some of the newer ones, doubles, I, I would probably go with double as well. Yeah, that's why Decade is a little bit difficult, because it does require a little bit of knowledge of the mm -hmm. past seasons that they feature. But it's not, I don't know if it, I would say it's a bad starter point, but it's definitely like challenge mode Common Rider, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely, especially like with all the movie tie-ins too, like... Yes. The show, like, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen Decade, but the last episode ends on a cliffhanger that leads you into the movie that came out, like, five months after that episode aired. And it's just kind of, like, the biggest annoyance, almost, because yeah. I watched it live and I was like, I don't know how this ends. And I probably won't know until next year because it has to come out on DVD and Blu-ray and then get subbed. And, uh... And it was way different from the trailer, too. Like, the trailer showed all these, like, random scenes of, like, I don't know, Subasa on the beach and, like, other people dying. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And then that none of that's in the movie. It's like, all right, <laughs> cool. Well, hopefully uh, that helps, I think, for Common Rider season, double. Gets doubled the recommendation here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's, let's hop back into the news before we answer any other questions. Um, so if you guys have noticed, the shirt I'm wearing, Power Morphicon, um, that's going to be our next piece. Because Power Morphicon 2018 announced some new uh, round of guests. So as you can see from these images, I'll try to go through these pretty quickly. We have Ron Wasserman, super cool. If you're not friends with him on Facebook, he posts some of the weirdest and funniest stuff. Um, super cool down-to-earth guy. But he did uh, the theme song, you know, like the Go, Go Power Rangers. That was him. <laughs> um Jason Yabara, who is best known for portraying Babu in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. Awesome guests. Awesome guests. I like how they have people not just from like one chunk, like pre-Saban or like Disney Saban or like Neo Saban now. Like it's everybody that they could get. Um, so we got Roger Valesco, who is best known for Carlos, you know, the Green Ranger, Black Space Ranger um, from both Turbo and In Space. We got Valerie Vernon. One of my favorites, she played Kendrix Morgan, you know, the pink galaxy ranger from Lost Galaxy. Ooh, this guy's super nice. Um, Michael Coppen, he's best known for portraying Lucas Kendall from Time Force. Uh, Jessica Ray, also really nice. She was actually, I met her at my very first convention ever when I was in Minnesota. Um, Jessica Ray, who's known for portraying Alyssa Enrilly? Is that how you say her name? character name I'd, i think so <laughs> i haven't seen that show in a long time uh she was the wild uh the white wild force ranger from power rangers wild force we got adam tuomian who uh super cool dude best known for portraying hunter bradley the crimson thunder ranger from power rangers ninja storm my favorite uh kevin duhaney known for portraying ethan james the blue dino ranger from power rangers dino thunder we got brandon j mclaren best known for portraying jack landers you know one of the best red rangers ever uh, from Power Rangers SPD, as well as Monica May, who was portraying Elizabeth Delgado, SPD Yellow Ranger. We got Camille Hyde, best known for portraying Shelby Watkins on the last season of Dino Charge and Super Dino Charge, as well as everyone's favorite Michi Yamato, who's uh, 
been creating Fujiyama Ichiban and his work that he did in Big Bed Beetleborgs. And then one of my uh, ones that I'm most excited for is Kyle Higgins. Kyle Higgins has been basically one of the lead guys behind creating like um, the the universe that's been going on in the new Boom Studios Power Ranger comics. Like he's the guy who created Lord Draken. Um, super cool, super cool work that he's been doing. Um, if you follow any of those guys on Twitter, they're always constantly like geeking out, and it's it's just really cool and neat to see that sort of be a thing, you know, that we're getting. The Power Ranger content that we deserve, you know, in a different form and a different media, while we can still keep getting the other stuff too, which is really, really fun. But yeah, I think he's the most, to me, the most exciting out of all the guests. Just mm -hmm. to kind of, I'd love to be in a panel with him while he talks about like his creative ideas and how he came up with Lord Dragon or like any of the storylines that are happening in the Power Rangers comics because it's getting really really interesting mm -hmm. definitely like i've i've been trying to keep up but again i'm just way too busy but good good stuff um and tokunet we're actually headed to uh power morphicon which is actually going to be in uh anaheim this year instead of pasadena so uh that's going from august 17th to august 19th and uh be sure to look for us there we'll be we'll be running around um should we answer another another question here? Oh, I think I think Nicole's mic went out. My mic, no. I see it. I see like your your uh, your picture flashing, but I don't I don't hear anything. Um, oh. Let's see. Let's see. So we answered that one. Um, here we go. So my life vlog asks, what is your reaction of the new Power Rangers 2019 Power Rangers Beast Morphers? What would you, uh, what would you have to say your initial reaction to that was? Oh no, Nicole. Okay. While she's fixing uh, her mic, my reaction, um, so... If you guys don't know a little bit about me, I actually auditioned for Ninja Steel uh, last last year, and so um, it was kind of it was kind of interesting to see them sort of backtrack to Go Busters. But I actually knew a little bit earlier before they announced it, and was super excited. And I was just for like a couple a couple of weeks just laughing at everybody's posts as we were getting closer into the new year of like, oh, it's easily going to be Q Ranger. Oh, it can't be anything other than Q Ranger, you know. Uh, then there's like a couple people that are like Juo, -ger. but yeah, I think it, I think it caught everybody off guard and it kind of shook everybody up, but I'm hoping that we will eventually get that, uh, Tokyo -ger adaptation. Cause that's, that's the one that I want to see adapted. Like they could do so much fun with that. They could just like, I'm not going to get into it, but there's, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, yeah. Nicole, are you back with us? I think so. Yeah, cool. Okay. Okay. What uh what was your reaction? Don't mind me. Of Beast Morphers, no worries. Similar reaction cuz I also knew ahead of time of what was happening, but I loved seeing the mixed reactions of the fandom yeah. cuz I know Go Busters has a partial opinions. You know, there's people that love it, there's people that Hate it so it's like I I personally am very excited because I'd love to see a different take on Go Busters and Definitely. all that so I I'm looking forward to it. I I, I kind of want to chalk it up to maybe being similar to um like Go Onger to RPM like we could potentially get just something completely different than what we are expecting, um, good or bad. And I mean Ninja Steel kind of did that too, where Ninja Steel was this family of ninjas. <laughs> And now they're just kids that are in high school and the ninja thing's kind of not really present. Um, so I think it could go anywhere. And that's always really, really exciting. But uh, yeah, that's, yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, I know we kind of looked at this and we discussed this before we started streaming, but this may be my favorite thing uh, from the week 
is Ultraman Zero and Belial PC cushions were announced by Premium Bandai. Oh my god. Belial. Belial. Oh, Belial. What did I say? Belial? I always. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's everybody. Okay. That was a joke. Uh, <laughs> so these PC cushions for both Zeo and. What was it? Belial. Belial. Um, will both be priced at 6,264 yen each and are expected to ship in June of this year. Um, as you can see from some of these really cute pictures, I just love how they have like this random person with <laughs> him in his lap, just, you know, on the YouTube. <laughs> and I love that they give him like his own like <laughs> little keyboard too. And like, here's the, the variant versions, but, uh, I don't know. I, it's just really fun seeing how some people try to market the toys and the, uh, the pictures that they use <laughs> like this one. There's a. She's clearly holding it <laughs> as if it's like a baby. And then what did you say? They, she's not holding belly though. Like there's no like picture of him getting hugged. It's because he's a bad boy. I mean, that's probably why he kept kept on the track he was going down. <laughs> Wasn't hugged enough as a little PC cushion. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Here's a question from Playmaker. What is your favorite Sentai and Rider Henshin sequence? Do you have one off the top of your head? Uh, I love, for Ryder, I love Trajador is my yeah. favorite henshin just of all time. Sentai? Really hard. There's so many good ones. I think maybe I'm starting to really like Maji Ranger's henshin sequence. Just because I love all the magical things and mm -hmm. all of, like the effects of that. So I, maybe that one. Uh, for me, for Rider, my favorite Rider was Kamen Rider Zeronos from Den O. Um, and the coolest sequence, like the coolest transformation I've ever seen is... Um, so he, he in the show leaves for a little bit and then he comes back. And when he does his brand new transformation with these new set of cards that he has, um, he's basically lying on his back, like dying. And it starts raining on him and all the raindrops start rusting his armor and you realize oh, that all yeah. those rain, rain, rain drops, um, <laughs> all of those raindrops <laughs> are uh, his memories. And those cards that he's now using are his memories that are on the line that he forgets. And so it just blew my mind that I've never seen anything that's been as cool as like the idea, the conceptualization of that. Um, for Sentai, for Sentai, I really liked uh, Shikanger. Shikinger, I think, was, like, Ooh. the first one that I saw that, um, had a, had a sequence. Like, it showed them, you know, like, whew, and then, like, the, the kanji came over them. And I was like, that's cool. But I think, like, halfway through the show, they had ones without a transformation sequence. And it was just, like, what it would look like if you were a bystander or someone they're gonna, you know, beat up. And, like, you get to see what it looks like when they transform. And I was like, that's some cool stuff. And then, of course, like, Everybody past that, you know, started copying it, like Gossager, Gokaiger, Gobus, Koyuger is like the main, the main one that really, you know, took a lot from that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Toei announces a novel for Kamen Rider X Aid, which takes place after the events of another ending V Cinema trilogy. You know, like those. I don't even know how many movies are after X Aid. It seems like a lot. My friend was trying to explain it to me, and I was just, like, I was zoning out. <laughs> um, Japanese <laughs> publishing company Kodansha will be releasing a novel of Kamen Rider x Aid, which takes place after the events of another ending trilogy, and will begin their release at the end of March. Hey, that's, that's now. Um, under the title Mighty Novel X. <laughs> I love it. This story promises that the past and future of that person will be revealed. Who that is, I don't know, and I literally don't know. Uh, it'll be written by Yuya Takashi, uh, Takahashi, who served as head writer for the show. Um, yeah, and if you're not familiar, Kodansha has been publishing novels in the common writer genre for several years. I know I have like an O's and a double one when they first started doing that, like seven years ago, six years ago. Um, but yeah. So the novel's scheduled to be published in June 2018. So, yeah. They're really milking X-Aid. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love X-Aid, mm -hmm. but 
they like uh, the V cinemas I like, but I'm like a novel too. This is gonna be like the new demo, basically, yeah. of the common writer Heisei Bartu. No, De Deno like Deno surprised me by how long it kept around because they had the brilliant idea of anybody that wants to leave the show, just turn them into a kid, and then we'll just recast a kid. <laughs> uh, if that kid wants to go too, well, we'll cast a different kid. We'll cast a different oh actor and then turn him into a kid. Right. Uh, it's it's fascinating, like how how long that show's been going on for. I love it. Um, here's one for you. Uh, it's from Anonymous. Uh, favorite writer slash Sentai gimmick like Gashots and Kyutama. Ooh, I gotta look at my shelf. What do I like? What have I collected a lot on my shelf? <laughs> I can immediately um, tell you. For me, for writer. It was the um, the switches, the Astro switches. Ooh. Those were so cool to me when that show came out. Like I had, I had the uh, the USBs, like the Gaia memories. I had like a couple of the O's coins, but like I got the forest belt, and I'm like, this is cool. And then I bought that like enemy one that all the bad guys use. It was it was so cool. That thing didn't leave my hand for like a week. <laughs> I think for Ryder, my favorite gimmick, though I didn't collect a lot of it personally, mm -hmm. were the rings and wizard. Because, mm -hmm. again, did magic they fit on your theme stuff. No. Okay. <laughs> but getting the ring, I did get the ring extensions. Even my tiny fingers couldn't handle those rings. But yeah. I love them. They're so cool. And for Sentai, uh, I think the ranger keys are kind of still something I really love. Yeah, yeah, I, I have a bunch of those as well. I just wish they had the spring-loaded action like the American counterparts did. Um, oh. I don't know if you ever looked at, like, the Power Ranger Megaforce keys, but those were um, those were spring-loaded, so they would actually, the legs would fly up. Um, just kind of like as it was in Gokaiger, and it was really weird to see, like, Power Rangers have something that was more similar to the Japanese show than the Japanese toy was. Which yeah. is really backwards. Like if you think of like Dino Charge, the Gabu revolver didn't have a trigger guard. So you couldn't actually spin it on your finger like everybody does in the Power Ranger show. It's like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> um I'm trying to think of like other Sentai gimmicks that were really fun. Like I don't I don't know. I just love the morphers. Those I love buying the morphers. Fun. The which ones? Yeah, the morpher. The Q Tamas. They're kind of mm. fun. There's a lot of them, but they're mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, I I I collected all of the all of the original nine, and then I realized like, oh, no more, I can't do this. <laughs> uh, but Morphers, it I will always a buy lot. a new Morpher. Yeah, I do. Right. I try to buy as many belts and Morphers as <laughs> I can. Yeah, it's bad, bad for my wallet. Let's see. So here's one for you too. Uh, what's our reaction of Lupin Ranger versus Pata Ranger? Good or bad? good good yeah definitely like it's it's so far i think episode three has been the weakest out of all the episodes but episode three is still really really good and really awesome and it already has like character development like we found out about blue's past with his you know fiance we found out about like green's insecurities and like both of those get very good screen time and get a lot closer to resolvement which sometimes sentai doesn't quite do i know common writer yeah. doesn't do it a lot like well they'll show a lot of stuff and then it never really kind of pans out it's kind of just like oh yeah remember that thing that happened <laughs> but uh common writer does that quite often but i feel like this time around they're doing a very good job of connecting the dots mm -hmm. even with only three episodes in mm -hmm. we'll have to see if they continue it though yeah definitely i don't know like the the director of the first two episodes, I made note of this in one of my videos. He did um Juoger episode forty six, and that was the greatest Juoger uh episode because it had like these POV GoPro shots of like the Yellow Ranger. Like you can see like Leo jump up and he's like punching the dude and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm like punching this guy and I was like, I wanna see more of that and then Lupin and Pot came out and it's like all of that exclusively. I'm like, this is I love I love it. this show. It's it's so good so far. Here we got one more to to ask or to answer from Shame O Eight. Favorite rider belt. 
This is hard. <laughs> this is hard. Uh, oh my god, I'm staring at my shelf and I have too many that I really, really love and I have like my own little setup for them. <laughs> I can answer I don't know, you one. go first. Um, yeah. This would be Decade. Decade had the cleanest looking belt and I've, I've bought a few belts. Like the first one I bought obviously was Zero Nose because he was my favorite. Um, I got... I, I skipped Decade, and then I bought the Double Belt, and the Double was the coolest one I had, just because I love the show. But then I got Forzays, and Forzays was huge, and I was like, this feels like, it feels like it could be, like, a real belt. Um, but I, I, like, have, like, now that I can, like, go to conventions and other places and see other people with the belts and, like, test them and feel them, it was weird. And then I got the Decade one, and the Decade one has the cards... And it just, like, the mechanism to, like, open it, you have to put your fingers and, like, it just, it feels, it feels, like, the most realistic. And, I don't know, I guess that's what I'm looking for, is I just want something to feel less like a toy, and more like, yeah. I don't know, like, it's, like, got a purpose. And Decade, like, as soon as I put that on, like, I could, like, feel, like, my whole stomach shift, like, when I would open it. I'm like, whoa, this is heavy duty. Uh, so Decade. <laughs> have a tie between double because i own it and i love double mm -hmm. and i just love like the gimmicks and everything but i've been watching fies lately and oh my god that belt is so cool mm -hmm. i wish i could find a belt like that belt because i know it's it's just so hard to find right now for not a hundred dollars or not csm so yeah, csm's like the only way to get one of those now that's not gonna be like beat up or broken or old and which anyways i would take it if it was a little beat up because it, it's still really cool but oh my god that we, fries belt is so awesome we should talk after this have you ever been on yahoo auctions japan then don't worry i am very familiar oh, okay, my okay. wallet is very familiar <laughs> like i i buy like a bunch of like toys on there that are just like here's everything from gaim and i got it for like a hundred dollars and it's like literally every toy from gaim uh, versus like you know all of like the that. the random one offs. It's like everybody's belt, everybody's little face plates and lock seeds, yeah. and I'm like, cool. All right, let's move on to the last piece yeah, of that. the week, and we have the trailers, the teaser trailers for the summer films of Lupin Ranger versus Pot Ranger, um, and Common Rider Build. So, yeah, we knew this was coming. This wasn't gonna be, you know, a big surprise. It's uh, it's pretty much one a year, and then of course the shows have visa. Uh, I love about these like early teasers. They obviously never have anything for it filmed yet, but they still want to get the news out. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like the build one cracks me up because it's just like really, really low uh, images of the two main characters. <laughs> Like here. here. <laughs> I know. If that's fine, but still. Are you ready? But I mean, like all the text and all the graphics, like they look amazing. They just need something from the actual, the actual uh, the movie <laughs> to get there. But Kesatsu Sentai Lupin Ranger versus or Kaito Sentai Lupin Ranger versus Kesatsu Sentai Pata Ranger and film and Common Rider Build the movie will be coming to theaters in Japan August fourth, twenty eighteen. So we'll probably be seeing those statewide by, I want to say, 2019 at the earliest. I'm not sure what their turnaround time for, like, DVDs and home media is over there. But, uh, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure Tom, Tom here from Tokunet will, uh, will give us the review, give us the verdicts uh, come <laughs> August. He's always really good at that. He's always, like, the first one there. <laughs> Not in the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, or he's in the movie too. Yeah, he's like the only white guy that they can beat up in Japan. So always, always the white guy getting yeah. beat up. No, like one of my friends actually like messaged me in there. He's like, "Hey, you know a lot about Toku. I've been watching some new movies. There's this one white guy that keeps getting beat up. Do you know who that is?" And I'm like, "No, oh, that's Tom." <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Yeah, but, there needs to be, like, a game of spot Tom in yeah. all these different Toku movies. And then, like, tell us how many times you spot him, and we'll give you, like, a sticker or something like that. I don't know. If you can spot all the times Tom has been beat up in a Sentai or Kamen Rider film. 
yep. <laughs> he's oh man he's he's super talented he does a lot of fun stuff over there but uh yeah so that's our show for the week um i'm just gonna page through real quick see if there's any other good questions that i should do uh we can do this one what would a mat what would a meetup between the path of rangers and decca rangers be like oh my god <laughs> I think the Potter Rangers would be like senpais and like so excited to meet other police officers like mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Be a good meetup, and I would love to see that crossover. I think, I think if they did do the meetup, it would be a lot like in Go Kaiger, where the Decker Rangers show up, and the Potter Rangers, I feel like, would be like, "We can do this much better." They don't know what they're doing, and then like maybe five minutes into the episode the Lupin Rangers, or at least one of them, is captured by Ooh. the Decker Rangers. Like, I feel... I, like, I, I have this whole thing going on with Lupin and Pot, where they have the same verse changers. I want them to... I want them to, ch like, trade their... whatever they equip onto it. Um, like, I want... I want, like, Pink Pat to, like, become, like, Lupin Pink. Or... Oh my god! even if it's just for like an episode or even if they do do like an entire change for a while like where like green and blue change places and so you have a green pata ranger or i mean a green lupin ranger and a blue pata ranger you know even if it's just for like an episode or two like that'd be yeah cool. i like that that'd be fun cool but yeah so that's our show for the week um any last thoughts it's, it's kind of hard for me to like keep track of all the chat you guys are you guys say a lot of cool yeah. stuff you guys are very active i know i'm trying to keep up but y'all having a good time in that <laughs> chat i i appreciate that yeah thanks for hanging out with us um if you guys like this let us know we uh we want to keep doing these pretty much um every every week you know unless there's like something crazy catastrophic that goes on um <laughs> But yeah, like, and the, and the way that we're going to do this too is like, you could see many different people hosting, many different people guests. Um, so yeah. And um, we'll also be uploading these. So if you guys have friends that didn't catch it or wanted to see it, or you just want to rewatch something that we said or make fun of how I'm uh, saying things, uh, this video will be going up shortly after we finish here. But uh, yeah, do you have anything else you want to say, Nicole? No, I'm just really excited for all the cool things that are coming up in Build and Lupin Ranger versus Pata Ranger. So yeah, this is going to be an exciting season for Toku. Definitely. I'm Oh, this year is already already looking up for for Toku. I was so I was so drained after Q Ranger. I still haven't finished Q Ranger either. I'm really bad at finishing things. Oh my god. I know. So, I better we better stop this pretty quick before someone spoils it. Uh anyway, Thank you, as always, for uh, guesting and coming on hosting with me, Nicole. I, I, saw, I saw you say something, but I didn't hear it. Oh, no, don't do it again, Mike. <laughs> right at the most important part. God damn. Cool. <laughs> and if you didn't know, Nicole is now the editor in transition for Tokunet. So all of the stuff that comes through Tokunet, if you ever need to reach out to somebody, there you go. Well, I was going to maybe say something else, but we'll save it for next week. We'll have some more fun stuff for you guys next week. Thank you guys for hanging out, and uh, have a good rest of your day.